going to import the package. Now, as a sort of PSA for all Infinity PBR stuff, there is shared scripts. So if you ever see this little recycle symbol, it means that script is going to be overwritten. And you should probably consider whether you really want to overwrite it or not. If you ever feel like you don't have the right files, come to the Asset Store and get the Infinity PBR support files. This is always going to be released with the latest versions of any scripts that are shared between the packages. Import this last and let all of the files overwrite and you'll get the latest versions of all those shared files. In this case, I know that I've just made updates to these files, so I'm going to include them. In the portraits package itself, I'm going to not include the demo scenes. I don't need that for this project, and so I'm not going to include them. All right, so now we have the portraits package inside our Infinity PBR Magic Pig Games folder, and we have the prefabs. So I'm going to bring the two prefabs I need into the scene here. The player object is a prefab already, and this is where I want the 3D avatars to show up. I want them to live right here, so as this moves around, the 3D avatars move around with it. So let's open up this prefab in context, and I'm going to drag the portrait avatar's parent onto this. So now this parent object will live with the player object. Now we don't have a avatar 3D prefab quite yet, but I have set up the portrait layers. So I'm gonna add these layers here. And I know that I'm going to be making these characters pretty small. So we're gonna put this here as a 1.2 up and 0.33 back. That's similar to the demo scene in the portrait avatars package. I'm also going to set the UI color to be pure white and we'll keep the background color as gray. That's fine for now. We'll come back to this after we set up our 3D prefab. Now the portrait avatar prefab here has a portrait 3D. I'm going to copy this and make it my own. So we're going to call this Legend of the Stones. And because I'm making my own version of this, I'm going to move that into my Legend of the Stone prefabs here as well. So I'll make a new folder here, call it Portraits Avatars and we'll move that down there. And let's load up that prefab. So here we have the your character here setting. For the purpose of this demo, all I wanna do is get it working. I'm not ready to add, do all the customization. I'll add that later. So let's just get these characters in here. Okay, right, so I've renamed that character Mesh and we have the half orc. All right, we're gonna go ahead and save that prefab. Now let's go back to our player object, to the portrait avatar's parent and assign that 3D prefab to the portrait avatar. So that should be ready to set up. We'll test it in a little bit, but we also need to set up our UI portrait itself. So back in our portrait prefabs, we have the UI portraits parent. Now this needs to go on a canvas. I have my UI canvas right here. And so I can just bring this down as a child of that. The UI portrait is the prefab that will be used here. I'm going to bring that down as a child because it's a lot easier to edit the prefab in context where you can see everything set up than if we were to edit the prefab without being in context. We're going to edit this in context. And, you know, for the purpose of this testing, there's really nothing I need to do here. Everything's already set up for me. So I'm just going to toggle this off. We'll keep that there. And let's go ahead and hook up the code. So in my debug canvas, I have this load portraits button here, and this is going to call the load portraits method on the debug controller. Right now, the load portraits method only has a debug log. And so let's hook this up to the portrait avatar system. Portrait avatars .instance create 3 d portrait should create our 3D portrait. You can of course dig into this code here and see what exactly it's doing. We don't need to provide a custom portrait avatar and we don't need to specify the layer index. The system will figure out all of that by itself. So now in play mode, when we click load portraits, we have the portraits being loaded. Now in this case, I believe we'd all agree that these portraits might be a little bit too close to these characters. So we can fix this. We're going to pause the game for now and we're not gonna press stop, just pause it. Go into any of your portrait avatars here and look at the camera. We're gonna zoom in on this. So we can see that the character is indeed really high up. I believe we still need to make them smaller. I right, go ahead and unpause this for now so you can see it live. We're gonna move the Z position back and we're gonna watch the portrait in the bottom left there to see uh, where exactly this looks correct to us. You can change all of the values here if you'd like. You could even change the field of view if you want to get a different field of view uh, and then bring this down a little bit. You could angle it down there's all sorts of different things, of course, you can do with the camera. It's your camera. 
You can handle it however you'd like. For this purpose, we're just gonna stick to a little bit higher maybe, and a little bit more angle down. And we'll move it in just a little bit as well. All right, we'll stick to right there. So I'm going to copy this component here. And I'm going to remember that we have the field of view at 81. We're going to get out of play mode here, load up our prefab, paste in our values for the position or the transform, and then set this to be 81. And then the other thing I want to do is make sure that this is just really small. Um, so I'm going to set the scale of this to 0.2.2.2. .2. Let's see why in just a second. Let's go ahead and press play again. We'll load these portraits again. So now when I zoom into these portraits, you see that they're actually quite tiny. Uh, the player object itself is right here and the avatars are quite a bit above them. Uh, perhaps we need to bring this down a little bit. I think actually the position of this is a little low. So let's fix this by making sure the position of the portrait avatars is actually near the ground. So I'm going to make that negative one and let's press play again, because of course this is going to spawn the characters at 1.2 above this position. All right, it does look like it's on the ground now. So we'll spawn the portraits. There we go. So now we have four portraits and they are very small and they are going to be mostly, if not entirely within the confines of this character capsule. And that means that as we walk around, there's a very small chance, very minimized chance that any objects will come between the portrait avatar camera and the portrait avatar mesh itself. There's only this little tiny gap there. However, as we move around, the characters are still getting the lighting from the scene. So let's load up the portrait avatar once more and let's add some lighting to this. Since I made the scale of the parent smaller, the children are all still scaled at one because every scaling is relative to the parent. So we're going to create a new empty object here. We're going to call this lighting and we're going to create two spotlights. All right. So the front light is going to be shining straight down at the character. And the backlight will be shining on the character's back. In fact, let me bring this up a little bit and angle it down as well to scale up on the shoulders and then select the portrait avatar and assign the lights to this right here. And then we will go ahead and save and press play again. So now when we're in the shadow from the directional light in the world, we still have the lighting, the two spotlights on the character, which I think provides a more pleasing experience. Of course, you can adjust those lights as you'd like. Future me here. I realized I need to make a couple more updates to the camera here. The first thing is that the clear flag should be set to solid color. Now you can choose to set this to depth only and ignore the clipping planes. And then you'll see the background of the player in the portrait. If you don't want that, it might be a little overwhelming to see so much movement in the portrait. If you don't want that, set this to solid color. And then the coloring mask, set this to default. The portrait values will be added by the system, but default ensures that we're going to see all of the lighting effects that other objects cast on this ob on this character. We're also going to set the near and far clipping planes to pretty much just encompass the character itself. Now, if your character is moving, if they are not uh, stationary and you know in the Z direction towards the camera, then you might want to have this expanded a little bit further. But the goal here is to minimize the chance that the camera will draw anything else. Again, there's always a chance that something will come between the player object and the camera in this little gap here. And that means it will be drawn by the camera if it's in the default layer. So we're going to set this to be just a little bit before and after the character so that they have some movement. And if we find that he starts getting clipped in the game, we can adjust that as needed. So now when we load the portraits, we can walk around. And as we get closer to this, we see the shadow forming over our characters as we get close to this building and the directional light is being blocked by this building. So there you go. This is a complete setup portraits. Now I will have to customize this to fit my game. Obviously each character is not going to be a half orc male. There's going to be different characters. There's going to be different wardrobe. They're going to be doing actions and doing other things. We might customize the lighting and we might even bring in the 
runtime color sampler to sample the color in the scene and adjust the colors of the UI as well. So there's more customization that I can do to make this really my own, but this is the complete setup for the portrait avatars in your project.